before my mother got sick. It was a few years before she had any, even the smallest sign of Alzheimer's. Um, one day we were going out and, you know, she was fussing with her makeup, you know. She, her lipstick, she, my mother never went out of the house without her lipstick. And um, I was kind of making fun of her. <laughs> and uh, she looked at me and she said, you know, quite seriously, she said, um, when I stop, when I, when I leave the house without putting on my lipstick, you know I'm really gone. And it was just weird that she said it like that because it was like, like almost like she knew what was down the road. So it was only maybe an hour and a half, but it brightened up her day. Um, she was alive during those moments, even if the rest of the day and the next day and the next day was bad, at least she had those special moments. It made me feel good too, I mean, to know we were acknowledging her birthday, and 80 is a big deal. Came back here to New York City about 12 years ago from Los Angeles. A big part of the reason uh, why I came back was because, um, you know, I had noticed during visits that my parents were getting a little bit older. I sort of expected that she would get this disease and I think she expected it too because her mother had it. I tried for a while to get her to go to the doctor because I noticed that there was something wrong, but she was kind of in denial about the whole thing. She was, she was just like, who talked to you? Did your father say something to you? Uh, it was just so out of character for her. So I backed away. Finally, I had to trick her to going to the doctor. And I said, can you, while we're there, do a memory test? You know what I mean? Just, you know, try to make it seem as subtle as possible so as not to make her uncomfortable. So um, we did. And, you know, she didn't do so well. You know, he wound up uh, confirming the diagnosis. Suddenly, I was responsible for my mother, and I saw that she had needs, and I had to take care of them. The thing was, you know, I want her to have a quality of life. Just because she has this disease doesn't mean that her life is over. I tried so much to do the things that she loved to do. We would go bowling. She continued bowling in a bowling league. We went to Broadway shows. My mother was a big fan of Broadway shows. Of course, I had to see Les Miserables a few times. <laughs> So, I mean, and I, you, you see your parent just become a completely different person and you're like helpless to do anything about it. My mother loved to walk. She was, she was like a fanatic about walking. One of the hardest moments for me during this whole process was I was actually shopping. I was in the store and I got a call from the uh, woman at VNS who basically said they were going to stop physical therapy. Um, ahead of the time that they were supposed to give her a certain amount of sessions, but they were going to stop because they said we have to help the patients, that we have to go to the patients that we can help. Basically they were saying, well, that was the moment when I realized my mother never again in her life was going to walk. And I just knew, I knew that that was it. My fiance at the time, he would kind of fill in also. He was really um, a big part of the caregiving, you know. In the beginning, I don't know if I could have done it without him, without his emotional support, and also with just the little things that he would do. He would just call up and he would say, hi, Joan, you know, how you doing? Just, you know, call up to be a friendly voice on the other end of the line. Um, and then um, uh, he died in 2004 in August, uh, very suddenly. 
one of these spur of the moment things we had for a while um, gone to the Queen's Theater in the park. We'd gone, we'd do a series of shows, which is you know nearby here in Flushing Meadow. A salute to Broadway, mainly the, the classics, the stuff my mother loved, you know, which is like all the Uncle all the, all the Rodgers and Hammerstein stuff and that sort of thing. And then we even arrived a little bit late. We got her in the wheelchair. We brought her inside, and she was right in front, right by the stage. And it was really weird, like her face lit up the second we walked in, you know, and here she was all disheveled with a blanket over her and her shoes falling off. And it was, I, I, it's like one of those things, you know, you know how they say sometimes you usually, you regret the things you don't do, but you almost never regret the, the things that you do, even if they're difficult, even if they're scary. It was like the, uh, her eyes lit up, she was tapping, she was kind of like, you could tell she recognized the song. And she looked at me, there was this moment that she looked at me. It was like, oh, you know me. You know that I love this. I mean, she was, you know, pretty far gone at that point, you know? But um, there was this look of complete and utter gratefulness and understanding in her eyes that I had brought her to such a wonderful place, to see something so wonderful. If there's anything positive to be said, you realize that life is just about the moment, you know what I mean? And if the person, even though the person can't ha remember what happened yesterday, if they're happy in that moment and their heart is full of joy in some way, or they feel love, I mean, this is life. And it, it really is all about the moment. So it, it just makes you, like I feel like I grew so much, as much pain as I, I felt through the whole process, I also feel like I was rewarded in some way. Like I grew through what I experienced. It made me appreciate life in a way I, I don't think I ever did before. And appreciate my mother and love her even more than I had before.